But we're still on this quest of looking for the ultimate number, if you will, you can get on a patient and say, okay, this is what that person's risk factor is. And I do think that that's where we've made bigger improvements because now we have population-based studies, we have more technologies, uh, better OCTs, we have hysteresis, other factors we can use to help us kind of assess what's going on with the patient and get a better idea how aggressive to be. Outside of that, there's also, for example, the use of other diagnostics like uh, corneal hysteresis, which gives us some information about being able to decide how aggressive we might need to be for a patient. Uh, central corneal thickness is an interesting risk factor. Uh, Connie mentioned the, the uh, hysteresis. Hysteresis is a very powerful risk factor for progression of disease, and I think it's one that's largely overlooked. In fact, if you take hysteresis out of the central corneal thickness measurement, central corneal thickness might not even be a risk factor for glaucoma progression. Hysteresis is absolutely critical for estimating the risk. Things like hysteresis have helped me a great deal because it does give you an understanding of the quality of your IOP. In other words, if someone has a low hysteresis with a high pressure, I'm much more worried than having a high hysteresis with a, with a higher pressure. So it, you have to take all of these modalities, the patient's age, the, the rate of progression with their IOP, and then really assess, do I need to be lower, do I have to be more aggressive, a percentage of reduction. So it's not just the number itself, but if someone is fluctuating with a low hysteresis and maybe progressing, that's gonna be much more worrisome to me than someone who's not. So I think it's, it's one of the many different variables that we place in our whole algorithm. Yeah, and I think, um, I think everyone said it very well. I, you know, for me, you know, visual fields and structural analysis play a critical role, talk about diagnosis, uh, staging, and then, um, and then watching and monitoring. And I, and I would say the incorporation uh, of ocular biomechanics, specifically with hysteresis that we have available, looking at the ability of the eye to handle a pressure head, uh, helps us with, uh, with the studies that we've seen published now.